If the original Legend of Zelda for the NES was considered by many to be the Rookie of the Year back in 1987, then Zelda II The Adventure of Link was the stereotypical sophomore slump in 1988. It belonged in the big leagues, and many people still loved it, but it wasn't nearly what people expected after that first big splash. Hey there everyone, this is Ray Carcel for Classic Game Room, and I admit that my own feelings for Zelda 2 are mixed at best. Its insane difficulty level, constant rotation between side view platformer and the original bird's eye view, a much heavier interaction and reliance on NPCs, and of course the RPG elements made Zelda 2 an interesting and fun game, but to deviate so much from what was established in the original had the gaming community let out a collective... Huh? The first thing that really shocks you is the transition between side-scroller and bird's-eye view. The bird's-eye view left something to be desired when compared to the original game as Link and enemies were barely visible sprites in this, with the fairies actually being the size of Link. But this was simply to be used as a faster tool to travel from point A to point B anyways. The main focus of the game was supposed to be put into the side-scrolling action sections, since that's really where the majority of your game takes place anyways. With levels of detail not before seen in many games, as you could actually see the jowls of the bulldog moblins or count the ribs of the Staphos Knights, the side-scrolling levels brought a great amount of detail to Legend of Zelda that would stay with it for the remainder of the series. What helps you recover from the shock of feeling like you're constantly being teleported to an RPG-like arena mixed with some Mario Brothers platforming, though, is the classic Legend of Zelda theme still pumping through your speakers. Whether the temple themes or the original theme itself, any Zelda fan will be able to smile at the return of such vintage tunes. Of course, going back to the RPG aspect of the game, the leveling up and experience system just didn't feel anything at all like the original, and looking back at it now, sticks out like a sore thumb. Link has always gotten stronger by collecting and utilizing items that he would find in the dungeons, and typically have to use those items to leave said dungeon alive. Zelda 2's system gives me the same feeling I had when I played Mega Man 64. It deviated too much from what worked for the series in an attempt at fleshing out the story, and to do that they made it more RPG than action-adventure. The most interesting thing for me though, just might be the story. Like many people, I have tried my best to figure out the actual timeline for the Legend of Zelda series now, over the years, after so many releases, but no matter what, many people seem to agree that Zelda 2 looks to be the final chapter for the entire series. After Link collects both the Triforce of Wisdom and Power in the original game, and vanquishes Ganon, he has to bring them together with the Triforce of Courage now, the one of course most associated with Link, in order to awaken the original Princess Zelda, while avoiding Ganon's remaining minions, who are trying to kill Link, in order to use his blood to have Ganon rise from the grave. And anyone who was familiar with the cartoon from the early 90s, well, not much of a spoiler here, but I guess Link does indeed finally get his kiss in this one. Looking back at this game's story now, how the original Zelda is put under a sleeping spell and her heartbroken brother decrees that every princess of royal blood shall be named Zelda until his sister awakens. It's a monumental revelation that, if you think about it, has served as the inspiration for nearly every Zelda game since then. So, even though Zelda 2 may have taken a huge left turn when it came to the gameplay design, its legacy is something far greater than a crappy overworld map and a weird side-scrolling RPG platformer to fight with. Of course, there were other problems. This was the only game that ever used the live system for Link, as it deviated from the now signature hearts in the upper left-hand corner. And what was worse was if you lost all your lives, you had to start over again from Zelda's tomb in the center of the pixelated map. This made for a lot of wasted time trying to get back and forth across graveyards and deserts and forests, and the rest of the expanse that is Hyrule in this game. Not to mention the horrible design of what was supposed to be Death Mountain. What has always been considered an epic and ominous feature in the Hyrule landscape looks and feels more like Swiss cheese than a legendary topographical feature. Despite all this though, the difficulty, the character development, 
the random side quests from NPCs to learn new magic, all give Zelda 2 a charm all its own. Not to mention the increased NPC input would also become a staple of the Zelda series, although it usually just would lead to a quarter heart container instead of unlocking a bridge so you can progress further in the game like in this one. So overall, if you were able to play Zelda 2 The Adventure of Link on its first go around, or got caught up with it on the virtual console, there's still a special nostalgia that surrounds Zelda 2, even if it isn't as special as the original.